Hey, we are in Jeremiah chapters 36 through 39 in the Good News Translation. The time is about 605 BC. It so happens to be the same time that Daniel and his buddies are held are taken captive to Babylon. Babylon. Uh, Jeremiah at this time is being barred from the temple and things are in a bad spot. So these next four chapters, they're jam packed with the cool information. So let's go ahead and get into it. Jeremiah uh, 36 through 39 in the Good News Translation. In the fourth year that Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, was king of Judah, the Lord said to me, Get a scroll and write on it everything that I have told you about Israel and Judah and all the nations. Write everything that I have told you from the time I first spoke to you when Josiah was king up to the present. Perhaps when the people of Judah hear about all the destruction that I intend to bring on them, they will turn from their evil ways. Then I will forgive their wickedness and their sins. So I called Baruch, son of Neriah, and dictated to him everything that the Lord had said to me. And Baruch wrote it all down on a scroll. Then I gave Baruch the following instructions. I am no longer allowed to go into the temple, but I want you to go there the next time the people are fasting. You are to read the scroll aloud so that you will hear everything that the Lord has said to me and that I have dictated to you. Do this where everyone can hear you, including the people of Judah who have come in from their towns. Perhaps they will pray to the Lord and turn from their evil ways because the Lord has threatened his people with his terrible anger and fury. So Baruch read the Lord's words in the temple exactly as I told him to do. In the ninth month of the fifth year that Jehoiakim was king of Judah, the people fasted to gain the Lord's favor. The fast was kept by all who lived in Jerusalem and by all who came there from the towns of Judah. Then, while all the people were listening, Baruch read from the scroll everything that I had said. He did this in the temple, from the room of Gemariah, son of Shaphan, the court secretary. His room was in the upper court near the entrance of the new gate of the temple. Micaiah, the son of Gemariah and grandson of Shaphan, heard Baruch read the scroll what the Lord had said. Read from the scroll what the Lord had said. Then he went to the royal palace, to the room of the court secretary, where all the officials were in session. Elishama, the court secretary, Deliah, son of Shammai, Elnathan, son of Akbar, Gamariah, son of Shaphan, Zedekiah, son of Hananiah, and all the other officials were there. Micaiah told them everything that he had heard Baruch read to the people. Then the officials sent Jehudi, the son of Nathaniah, grandson of Shelemiah, and great-grandson of Cushi, to tell Baruch to bring the scroll that he had read to the people. Baruch brought them the scroll. Sit down, they said, and read the, sc- and read the scroll to us. So Baruch did. After he had read it, they turned to one another in alarm and said to Baruch, We must report this to the king. Then they asked him, Tell us now, how did you come to write all this? Did Jeremiah dictate it to you? Baruch answered, Jeremiah dictated every word of it to me, and I wrote it down in ink on this scroll. Then they told him, You and Jeremiah must go and hide. Don't let anyone know where you are. The officials put the scroll in the room of Elishama, the court secretary, and went to the king's court, where they reported everything to the king. Then the king sent Jehudi to get the scroll. He took it from the room of Elishama and read it to the king and all the officials who were standing around him. It was winter, and the king was sitting in his winter palace in front of the fire. As soon as Jehudi finished reading three or four columns, the king cut them off with a small knife and threw them into the fire. He kept doing this until the entire scroll was burned up. But neither king nor any of his officials who heard all this was afraid or showed any sign of sorrow. Although Elnathan, Deliah, and Gamariah begged the king not to burn the scroll, he paid no attention to them. Then he ordered Prince Jeremiel, together with Sirai, son of Azrael, 
and Shelemiah, son of Abdeel, to arrest me and my secretary Baruch. But the Lord had hidden us. After King Jehoiakim had burned the scroll that I had dictated to Baruch, the Lord told me to take another scroll and write on it everything that had been on the first one. The Lord told me to say to the king, You have burned the scroll, and you have asked Jeremiah why he wrote that the king of Babylonia would come and destroy this land and kill its people and its animals. So now I, the Lord, say to you, King Jehoiakim, that no descendant of yours will ever rule over David's kingdom. Your corpse will be thrown out where it will be exposed to the sun during the day and to the frost at night. I will punish you, your descendants, and your officials because of the sins all of you commit. Neither you nor the people of Jerusalem and of Judah have paid any attention to my warnings, and so I will bring on all of you the disaster that I have threatened. Then I took another scroll and gave it to my secretary Baruch, and he wrote down everything that I dictated. He wrote everything that had been on the first scroll and similar messages that I dictated to him. King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylonia made Zedekiah, son of Josiah, king of Judah, in the place of Jehoiakim, son of Jehoiakim. But neither Zedekiah nor his officials nor the people obeyed the message which the Lord had given me. King Zedekiah sent Jehukal, son of Shelemiah, and the priest Zephaniah, son of Messiah, to ask me to pray to the Lord our God on behalf of our nation. I had not yet been put into prison and was still moving about freely among the people. The Babylonian army had been besieging Jerusalem, but when they heard all the, heard that the Egyptian army had crossed the Egyptian border, they retreated. Then the Lord, the God of Israel, told me to say to Zedekiah, The Egyptian army is on its way to help you, but it will return home. Then the Babylonians will come back, attack the city, capture it, and burn it down. I, the Lord, warn you not to deceive yourselves into thinking that the Babylonians will not come back, because they will. Even if you defeat the whole Babylonian army so that only wounded men are left, Lying in their tents, they would still get up and burn this city to the ground. The Babylonian army retreated from Jerusalem because the Egyptian army was approaching. So I started to leave Jerusalem and go to the territory of Benjamin to take possession of my share of the family property. But when I reached the Benjamin gate, the officer in charge of the soldiers on duty there, a man by the name of Arijah, the son of Shelemiah, and the grandson of Hananiah, stopped me and said, you are deserting to the Babylonians. I answered, that's not so. I'm not deserting. But Arja would not listen to me. Instead, he arrested me and took me to the officials. They were furious with me and had me beaten and locked up in the house of Jonathan, the court secretary, whose house had been made into a prison. I was put in an underground cell and kept there a long time. Later on, King Zedekiah sent for me, and there in the palace, he asked me privately, Is there any message from the Lord? There is, I answered, and added, You will be handed over to the king of Babylonia. Then I asked, What crime have I committed against you, or your officials, or this people, to make you put me in prison? What happened to your prophets who told you that the king of Babylonia would not attack you or the country? And now, your majesty, I beg you to listen to me and do what I ask. Please do not send me back to the prison in Jonathan's house. If you do, I will surely die there. So King Zedekiah ordered me to be locked up in the palace courtyard. I stayed there, and each day I was given a loaf of bread from the bakeries until all the bread in the city was gone. Shephatiah, son of Matan, Gedaliah, son of Pashur, Jehukal, son of Shelemiah, and Pashur, son of Malchiah, heard that I was telling the people that the Lord was telling the people that the Lord had said whoever stays on in the city will die in war or of starvation or disease but those who go out and surrender to the Babylonians will not be killed they will at least escape with their life i was also telling them that the lord had said i am going to give the city to the babylonian army and they will capture it then the officials went to the king and said This man must be put to death. By talking like this, he is making the soldiers in the city lose their courage, and he is doing the same thing to everyone else left in the city. He is not trying to help the people. He only wants to hurt them. King Zedekiah answered, Very well then, do what you want to with him. I can't stop you. 
So they took me and let me down by ropes into Prince Malchiah's well, which was in the palace courtyard. There was no water in the well, only mud, and I sank down in it. However, Abedmelech, the Ethiopian, a eunuch who worked in the royal palace, heard that they had put me in the well. At that time, the king was holding court at the Benjamin Gate. So Abedmelech went there and said to the king, Your majesty, what these men have done is wrong. They have put Jeremiah in the well, where he is surely to die of starvation, since there is no more food in the city. Then the king ordered Abedmelech to take me take with him three men and to pull me out of the well before I died. So Abedmelech went with the men to the palace storeroom and got some worn out clothing, which he let down to me by ropes. He told me to put on the rags under my arms so that the ropes wouldn't hurt me. And I did this. And they pulled me up out of the well. After that, I was kept in the courtyard. On another occasion, King Zedekiah had me brought to him at the third entrance of the, to the temple and said, I'm going to ask you a question, and I want you to tell me the whole truth. I answered, if I tell you the truth, you will put me to death. And if I give you advice, you won't pay any attention. So King Zedekiah promised me in secret, I swear by the living God, the God who gave us life, that I will not put you to death or hand you over to the men who want to kill you. Then I told Zedekiah that the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, had said, If you surrender to the king of Babylonia's officers, your life will be spared and this city will not be burned down. Both you and your family will be spared. But if you do not surrender, then this city will be handed over to the Babylonians, who will burn it down, and who will, and you will not escape from them. But the king answered, I am afraid of our own people who have deserted to the Babylonians. I may be handed over to them and tortured. I said, you will not be handed over to them. I beg you to obey the Lord's message. Then all will go well with you and your life will be spared. But the Lord has shown me in a vision what will happen if you refuse to surrender. In it, I saw all the women left in Judah's royal palace being led out to the king of Babylonia's officers. Listen to what they were saying as they went. The king's best friends misled him. They overruled him. And now that his feet have sunk in the mud, his friends have left him. Then I added, All your women and children will be taken out to the Babylonians, and you yourself will not escape from them. You will be taken prisoner by the king of Babylonia, and this city will be burned to the ground. Zedekiah replied, Don't let anyone know about this conversation, and your life will, be not, will not be in danger. If the officials hear that I have talked with you, they will come and ask you what we said. They will promise not to put you to death if you tell them everything. Just tell them you were begging me not to send you back to prison and to die there. Then all the officials came and questioned me, and I told them exactly what the king had told me to say. There was nothing else they could do, because no one had overheard the conversation. And I was kept in the palace courtyard until the day Jerusalem was captured. In the tenth month of the ninth year that Zedekiah was king of Judah, the king Nebuchadnezzar of Babylonia came with his whole army and attacked Jerusalem. On the ninth day of the fourth month of Zedekiah's eleventh year as king, the city walls were broken through. When Jerusalem was captured, all the high officials of the king of Babylonia came and took their places at the middle gate, including Nagai Sherezar, Samgar Nebo, Sarsakim, and another Nagal, Sherezer. When King Zedekiah and all his soldiers saw what was happening, they tried to escape from the city during the night. They left by way of the royal garden, went through the gateway connecting the two walls, and escaped in the direction of the Jordan Valley. But the Babylonian army pursued them and captured Zedekiah in the plains near Jericho. Then they took him to King Nebuchadnezzar, who was in the city of Rabiah, in the territory of Hamath, and there Nebuchadnezzar passed sentence on him. At Riblah, he put Zedekiah's sons to death while Zedekiah was looking on, and he also had the officials of Judah executed. After that, he had Zedekiah's eyes put out and had him placed in chains to be taken to Babylonia. Meanwhile, the Babylonians burned down the royal palace and the houses of the people and tore down the walls of Jerusalem. Finally, Nebuchadnezzar, 
the commanding officer, took away as prisoners to Babylonia the people who were left in the city together with those who had deserted to him. He left in the land of Judah some of the poorest people who owned no property, and he gave them vineyards and fields. But King Nebuchadnezzar commanded Neb- Nebuzaradan, the commanding officer, to give the following order. Go and find Jeremiah and take good care of him. Do not harm him, but do for him whatever he wants. So Nebuzaradan, together with the high officials, Nebuchadnezzar and Nagal Sherezer, and all the other officers of the king of Babylonia, had me brought from the palace courtyard. They put me under the care of Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, the grandson of Shaphan, who was to see that I got home safely. And so I stayed there among the people. While I was still in prison in the palace courtyard, the Lord told me to tell Abedmelech, the Ethiopian, that the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, had said, Just as I said I would, I am going to bring upon this city destruction and not prosperity. And when this happens, you will be there to see it. But I, the Lord, will protect you, and you will not be handed over to the people you are afraid of. I will keep you safe, and you will not be put to death. You will escape with your life because you have put your trust in me. I, the Lord, have spoken. I got to show you this, uh, these artifacts here before we close. In 2005, 2008, uh, Dr. Eliette Mazar found these two impressions uh, in clay with names. One has the name of Gedaliah, the son of Pashur, and the other is Jilkau, the son of Shelemiah. Two of the names that are recorded in chapter 38. And so this is just so, this is so fascinating. At some point, everyone will believe that God's word is true and it stands the test of time. I mean, history is speaking for itself right there. It's interesting. The king took a knife and he cut the words of the scroll, the words of God, and he burned them. Uh, Sadly, People are still really in the practice of of cutting God's word and trying to fit God's word into their own theology. And so, before you decide to to ever disregard any words from God, please, please compare Scripture with Scripture and seek the truth. And even if it hurts, trust the Lord and what He's trying to tell you. I hope that you have a fantastic day.